guys welcome back to another tech guru video today we're in Adobe InDesign CC and I'm going to be showing you an overview of the design tools that you will be using in Adobe InDesign CC and hopefully help you out in getting started with using uh, Adobe InDesign in general and just give you a basic rundown of everything just the basic very bare bones beginner tutorial so let's go ahead and jump into it so in Adobe InDesign you're going to be using this program to create layouts and you're going to be using it for uh, magazines and brochures and flyers and whatever it may be that you're trying to design so I'm going to take you down through the list of tools here and explain a brief description of many of them so let's go ahead and jump into it so as you see here this is our toolbar the thing that I'm dragging around here on the screen this is going to be where all of your tools are hosted now if you cannot see this toolbar you need to go up to window and then go down to tools which is right here and make sure that the check mark is right beside it there once you've done that you're going to be able to see this toolbar and then it may be way over here to the left and if that's the case you can click up here at the top of it and drag it anywhere you want onto the canvas so let's go ahead and look at the first few tools so the first two tools that we're going to take a look at are the selection tool and the direct selection tool so the selection tool is going to be your tool of use when you're trying to move stuff around so I have this text box here that has the text in it and I can move it anywhere I want I can even go over here and and resize that text box so I can do anything here with the selection tool now the direct selection tool which is different in that it's a little gray or white color there actually is used to manipulate individual points of a shape or image or whatever it may be on your document so here I can take the direct selection tool and select a point on this rectangle or square and I can manipulate just that point solely so again the direct selection tool allows you to manipulate individual points and the selection tool allows you to take stuff and just move it around as a whole so that's the difference in the direct selection tool and the normal selection tool so before we get any further I'm going to explain one thing to you when you're in Adobe InDesign CC you're going to see all of these different colored lines come up when you're moving stuff around so as I'm moving this rectangle around you can see here there are all types of green lines and there's pink lines and all kinds of lines these are your alignment grids Adobe InDesign does a fantastic job in letting you know hey this square is centered to this line or this object or image is centered to the page now you need to go and you can look and, and see exactly which line means what but it's fairly self-explanatory when you start manipulating the objects but make sure you pay attention to that uh, because you are you know the main thing in layout in page layout when you're working with a magazine or a brochure or whatever it is is making sure that everything is aligned and neat and looks the way it should be so let's go ahead and move on now to uh, the page tool now the page tool uh, is is something that's going to allow you to manipulate you know adding or removing pages from a document if you go over here you can see that I have the pages panel uh, pulled up here and it may be over here in your your taskbar over here to the right and it may say pages just like you see here but if you click and hold that it'll expand it out and it'll show you exactly what you're looking for so as you see here I've got two different pages on this document in order to go to a page directly or immediately you can just double click on that page now I am at page two so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on page one and now I'm back at page one so let's go ahead and see what else we can do we can actually delete pages by clicking on on the trash can icon here and then we can also create new pages by just clicking on the create new page button right here so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new page like I just did and then in order to delete that page make sure it's selected and then click the trash can once again now I'm gonna go back to page one and continue on the next tool that we are going to look at is your gap tool so I have already discussed the different alignment lines that you're going to see within Adobe InDesign the gap tool allows you to do some fine-tuning and make sure that your images are in exact distance or amount away from a specific object so if your client says I want two and a half inch margins well you need to go in here and you need to make sure that you are two and a half inches away from your margins you can also click and hold and the gap tool will add or remove space from an object if you need more distance in between two objects or you need you know less distance you can click and hold and drag it and make 
bigger or smaller gaps that is the gap tool the next tool you're going to see is the content collector tool I'm not going to get into that right now that is more advanced stuff and I will talk about that in a future video next we're going to look at our type tool now the type tool is fantastic there are two different types of type tools it is the type tool the normal one and then the type on a path tool uh, it's fairly self-explanatory if you have a circle like I have here at the bottom of the page and I want text to go around the circle select the type on path tool go right here above whatever objects you have and then start typing all around that circle so I'm gonna go ahead and select the regular type tool like I have here and in order to create a text box it's as easy as clicking and holding and dragging out a text box just like I did there I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and go ahead and use the one I already have created up here now in order to edit or manipulate text it's just like a word processor it's almost like if you were in Microsoft Word or uh, um, the Apple's version uh, pages you actually have stuff up here in the upper side of your screen that's going to allow you to edit that text just like if you were in a word processor text is one of the most important things in Adobe InDesign because you're going to be creating magazines and you're gonna to want to uh, have text that just looks and flows with the page so you're going to need to know how to do that now up here in the upper side of the screen you're going to be able to change the font you're going to be able to change what type of font you're using and Adobe InDesign CC added a new feature where you can actually click the star there by a font and that's going to be your favorite fonts so that way if you want to go back to them again and again you can go and say show favorite fonts only and it'll show only your favorite fonts just like I have here now once you've selected the font that you want you can actually change the height the width you can change the margins of it you can change whether it's bold or italic you can change the color of the stroke you can change the color of the fill uh, which is the inner and outside of the text what color that's going to be you could even change the thickness of how thick the stroke is on the outside there's so much that you can do up here and you can center right left align it just like if you were in a word processor next we're going over to the line tool this is very self-explanatory as you see here I already have two different lines drawn out now in order to draw a straight line in Adobe InDesign you're going to need to hold shift on both Windows and Mac and then draw out doesn't matter how uh, fidgety your hand is how much uh, you know shakes you may have in your hand it doesn't matter if you're holding shift that line will always be exactly straight and that works for both vertically and horizontal so if I'm drawing one up and down that also works the same way with that as well so that is the align tool next we're going to move into the pen tool the pen tool is uh, as it is in many Adobe programs a very important tool the pen tool allows you to create and remove individual points and then by clicking and holding on those points I am able to curve those lines and manipulate them to make any type of shape or border or whatever it is that I'm trying to create and this is great for artists uh, who are much better than me at drawing things and manipulating objects so that is the pen tool and also underneath the pen tool you're going to see the add and delete anchor point and all of that is is once you have your object drawn out you can add additional anchor points or delete additional anchor points to make more curves in the, in the shape and to make it the way you want it to be next we're going to look at the pencil tool this is very self-explanatory as well the pencil tool is great if you were just wanting to doodle or draw uh, and make a nice uh, organic looking text you know font if you have good handwriting whatever it may be uh, you can go in here and you can create that by going in and writing with the pencil so the pencil works just like it would if you had a pencil and a piece of paper with you so we have the pencil then the smooth and erase tool and those are very self-explanatory as well next I'm going to move into the picture frame tool so you're going to be inserting many pictures into Adobe InDesign CC so let's go ahead and look at that on page two here so I already have two different pictures picture frames here the same image but you see I have two different vantage points now in order to get an image into a picture frame what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete that picture frame and now I'm going up and I'm going to create a rectangle rectangle shape picture frame so I'm going to go ahead and select the rectangular frame tool and then I'm going to click and hold and draw out my rectangle now in order to draw a perfect square just like it was with the line just hold down shift click and hold and that will draw a perfect square so I'm going to go ahead and draw one just a little bigger than that like this here 
uh, didn't do it right there so we're gonna go ahead and draw a perfect square just like that so what you're going to do to get your image into the picture frame is you're going to select the picture frame just like I have here and then go up to file and then down to place and then you're going to search your computer to find the picture that you're wanting to find like I have here select that picture and then click open now that image is in the frame but it's way 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 too zoomed in so what you're going to have to do to manipulate the photo is double click on your picture frame and then click and hold and you're now dragging this image to put exactly where you want it in the frame once we have the image where we want it we can double click again and then we can actually manipulate the size or the rotation of this specific picture frame so now I'm gonna make it a little bigger like I have here and now we're seeing that we're getting the image exactly where we want it again to manipulate the photo you double click and you double click again to get out of it and that's how you manipulate photos within the picture frame so again you have a choice of the rectangular frame tool the ellipse frame tool and then the polygonal frame tool which is here all right we're gonna move on from that now in order to uh, move on to our next tool here I'm gonna show you a few things at the bottom of the page next we have our shape tool which we can do rectangles we can do ellipses and we can do polygons so again you can hold down shift when having a tool selected so if I have the ellipse tool selected like I do now I can hold down shift and that will draw out a perfect circle okay and again just like with the text if you go to the upper side of the screen here you can actually see all of the different things that you can do with that object so I can go up here and I can change the fill color to a nice red color and then I can actually change the stroke color of the exterior of that circle and, and make it thicker and change the color of that all of that is done in the upper hand side of your screen that is shapes and that's the shape tool we have next we have the scissors tool and the shear tool now these tools I'm not going to get uh, too much into today but they're just like very similar to a crop tool if you're trying to uh, trim up an object again trying to meet those margin deadlines for your client or whatever it may be the trim and shear tools are going to allow you to do that next we have our gradient swatch tool now the gradient swatch tool allows us to apply gradients to specific objects so whatever object that we want to apply a gradient to we can just select the gradient tool there and then make it so we have a nice gradient which fades from one color to another and in this case it's from white to black but again you can make that any color you want uh, by going to the gradient panel up there and changing that to whatever you want it to be so next we're going down and we see the note tool and the eyedropper tool so the note tool I'm not going to get into uh, when working on InDesign projects you're most likely if you're working on a large project going to be working with other people you can actually make notes on specific objects and, and say to yourself well hey I might want to come back to this later and see if it actually looks good once the project is completed so you can create exterior notes with the note tool next we have our eyedropper tool what is an eyedropper tool so I'm about to show you exactly what that does so we now have changed our color of our rectangle we have changed it to green now let's say we have someone who says I want my text in my document to be the exact same color as this image in order to do that you need to go ahead and select your text up here and highlight it and then go ahead and grab your eyedropper tool from the bottom and then what you want to do is take the color from whatever you're trying to match like this green rectangle and click on it and now the text is the exact same color as this shape down here and you can do this with images and you can match color and it just makes your project look so much more fluid and that is indeed the eyedropper tool next I'm going to show you the two last tools are going to be our zoom in and zoom out and then our hand tool now the zoom in and zoom out is very self-explanatory click that and then click on an object or the project wherever you want to zoom in and then use the hand tool to actually manipulate the document to move it around to get to where you want to get so you can edit and get into the nitty-gritty of your project so in order to automatically zoom in or zoom out you can you can hold command on a Mac control on a Windows and then the addition or subtraction keys on a keyboard and this allows you to automatically zoom in or zoom out without even having to use the zoom tool so that is how you manipulate the document so guys this has been just a basic rundown of, of Adobe InDesign CC I really hope that you guys have received something from it I hope that you've gotten 
to learn about the tools that you're going to be using within Adobe InDesign CC. If you do have any questions, however, go ahead and put those in the comment box below. I'm going to make a, a many, many more Adobe InDesign CC tutorials getting into the individual tools. I already have some on Adobe InDesign CS5 and CS6. I do a lot of work in InDesign and I, I have very much have a lot of experience in this program so go ahead and ask me any question you may have in the comment box below subscribe to my channel for more great content like this hit the like button down below it does help me out and I will see you guys next time